we, we don't hear about that. Or uh, the situation in Burma, where again, a conflict is brewing uh, inside the country, but this time targeting a small minority like the Rohingya or, or, or others who are also Muslim. So you hear a lot of things in the media, and uh, but there are so many conflicts right now that were quiet or non-existent four or five years ago, but because the situation in Syria was not handled correctly, a lot of people said, okay, this is our time. You know, we, we can push an agenda now uh, uh, because there is nothing to stop us. So a collapse of the global order that we have seen is probably unstoppable because we have two more years of the environment administration and whether you're a Republican or Democrat at this stage doesn't really matter. It's, there is a certain ideological commitment and it's going to take us to 2016 where whoever is going to end up in the White House is going to have a hell of a task ahead and it might be too late to prevent some, some, some issue. The future of Syria is not Syria. The future of the region is in the air. Is in the air. That, this is, well, thank you very much, Ammar. These are very helpful insights. And the future of Syria is no Syria. This is something I'm sure lots of people will ask about in the Q&A. Uh, but for now, I want to move to Ammar. And hopefully, in, in 10 to 15 minutes, you can tell us about your perspective. Oh, sorry, for that question. I was doing it. Yes. Um, 20 minutes. Tell us about your perspective. And then I'm sure there are lots of questions coming in the Q&A um, session. So we'll hear more of your Actually, I would first I'd like to thank Turk, Hamad, and Ali Khalid. So this is my friend Ali Khalid because it's a platform that really is great. And I enjoy that you are talking about this. I don't agree except in two points that you talk about, my colleague. Uh, it's about the energy to start and about North Syria. I, 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 energy is very important change. I don't think this was the, one of the major things that mobilized the situation in Syria. And I believe it is in Syria that we reduce and grow up one of them with North Syria. Um, the platform that he built is great. That's a lot of what I'm trying to, to address in my, my, my points. Everything he wrote, he talked, is, is very clear and very right and very correct. I'm trying to talk more about Syria itself, from Syria, from Syria inside the region. Since 1965, when they get what they call the Arabism, in Syria, they try to use that umbrella of Arabism in order to hide their own agenda, which is sectorism. And uh, as we, before, as you may know that the Alawites in Syria, they considered for a long time as being non-Muslim. Uh, in order to cover that, they joined uh, all the secular parties like fascism in the past. And they tried to prove that they are really national guys and they start by the Kurds. So, so they, were, they were targeting the Kurds to say, look, we are good guys. So they suffered the curse, our brother, the curse, Syrian curse, they suffered, they, they were the first people to suffer from all this uh, policy. Uh, they confiscated their lands, they, uh, they, 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 they didn't provide them any nationality, they, uh, they considered them in the Syrians uh, as foreigners, right, that's what you can do, or as maybe, yeah, they call them as And till today, or not today, till 2010 at least, the Kurds, Socially and economically, we're very far away from the Syrian society. I lived in Syria for most of my life, I think. I never met a Kurds. I met the Syrian Kurds who live in Damascus, who have historically Damascus city, or Khartoum. But I never met the Kurds who are in Jazeera, where he lived. And that's with the time, now I'm talking about more about the Kurds again. So with the time, we have a lot of mistrust. We don't know them who are there. And the media, they always say, the Kurds want to have their own state, and here at the Arabism, we would have the Arab unity. So how come we handle them? And they, they, by this way, they justify all the tactics or policies they did concerning the Kurds. When the revolution started, here we, here we have these two kinds of scenarios. That from one end, some of the Kurds, they believe this is the international, this is the historical time for us to have our own state. Whereas the Arabs still at that time, they say, guys, where we are headed to, our revolution is for dignity, for democracy, for constitution, for our rights. It's not about you. It's not about you have your own state. You have to join us. Then the history comes up again. They say, okay, 2004, when the Assad forces come to the Hasaka area and they killed a couple of hundred of us, you are Arab, you keep silent. And the Arabs say, look, guys, when Assad forces came to Hama in 1980s, and they killed 30,000 of Arab people, where, where you were. 
So I mean, at the end of the day, the regime, Syrian regime policy was just really to torture everyone, psychologically, economically, physically, you name it the way you like, and build as Ahmadi, he said, they build the mistrust between the component of the Syrian people. So today, again, we're back to Ahmadi, today where the people sit together as the Syrian opposition or as the Syrian. Each one had his own way of thinking, and each one, in a way, don't trust the other. But because we are bad guys, rather than you should figure out that the Assad, uh, the Assad regime by itself, they changed the software in our blood. You know, they changed the DNA in our blood in the way for the 50 years they took all the time. We say, Ahmad is in the United States, they choose to work with the American interests. I think, I think Ahmad is a Syrian guy. He, is, he has his own way of thinking about Syria, and I have to respect that. And seeing that she's good, that she has her own right to think the way she thinks, and I have to respect her. In the Syrian view, to the pressure of the regime, intelligence, torture, depriving of the ID, depriving of education, you, you name all these kind of things. We reached to the point after 50 years that it's very normal time, very normal results that the people sit and don't talk with each other. That's number one. When the revolution started, as Ahmad said, or as everybody knows, when it started, the people, they didn't talk about much deep concepts. They talk about very uh, global norms human rights, dignity, democracy, elections. They, even they didn't know till today how to reach there, but this is what they are looking for. Still, due, due to the education, due to the things where were just spread out very fast, we didn't find out the, we didn't have a charismatic leader. And again, it's not our fault, it's again 50 years of one man show in Syria that never allowed anyone to be a leader. When we have Mishai Tabu, one of the Kurds, I don't think about this guy. But <laughs> when we have same thing, some Kurd guy who say Kurds are good and they kill them. When we see Syrian activists like Riyas Mother who used to spread who give the water and the flowers to the Syrian soldiers while they were attacking the city, he used to give them he, he tried to make civil movement in the in the town to give the soldiers flowers and water. This is true, this is dangerous and they kill them. At the same time when we have fifteen hundred terrorists who used to send to Iran to attack the American forces and they have same happened in Syria. They put them in the jail in 2009. So when the revolution started with that norms, human rights, democracy, blah, 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 as I say, this is the good guys who spoil everything. And these guys, they have, as you all, everyone knows, I think, they have, they are, they are well trained, well equipped, they know how to make cells, they know how to make networking, they know how to get the funds, they have contacts everywhere. So it was for the Assad regime, it wasn't to avoid this civil movement that was going very fast, and it couldn't be very fast. In Hama, in Dirzor, in Dara'a, in Damascus, Damascus was in Hama, in Dirzor, we have 100,000 of people who demonstrate peacefully in the main cities. And I think, again, I agree here again with Ahmad, if the Qataris and the Saudis and the Kurds and everybody else were not supporting these guys or some brought some, some of these guys by workers who still have peaceful demonstration. And I think we will reach to a much better place than we where we are right now. But here we are. So when Assad start to attack the people by using all kinds of weapons that he had, there were no replies, there was no one protecting Syria, no one cares about the Syria, except by statements. It's it's very normal to have action and reaction. So blood gets more blood. And attack gets more attack, more counter attack. Then Assad understood again, and he just feel all these 15 or more plus people or who, who are terrorists by definition they are terrorists. I mean, uh, jihadis, they were in Afghanistan, they were in Iraq, they were in Syria, they were in and they were in there. And then we suddenly start to have to know about something called Jamaat Nusra. And we didn't know what Jamaat Nusra, and people again, they get confused. If they are fighting Assad, maybe they are good guys. If not, they are not fighting the Syrians, so why to be against them? We didn't process at the time of the people that these people they affiliated with Al Qaeda. So for a while in Syria, the people think that Jamaat Nusra is not that Al Qaeda. Then officially they announced that they are Al Qaeda, and the people start to say, "Well, what the hell we are doing?" And then we have more extremists, then uh, ISIS. And, and here, when we talk about ISIS and Jamaat Nusra or the extremists in Syria, we have to differentiate. <coughs> many elements to be there for the Syria. There is some Syria with the Jamaat Nusra, there are some Syria with ISIS, which this is fact, we cannot deny it, but then we have to think more deeply. Are these people are really uh, 
belong either already to the same groups or they were pushed to the same groups. If we provide them alternative, we will take them out of these groups or we just will have stereotyped anyone who is Al Qaeda is bad guy. I think I'm talking about Syrian groups. Uh, the Syrian Free Army at a certain time was controlling more than 60% of the Syrian lands uh, by themselves when they were asked by the West. When we asked the West, or they, when they, they asked the West that we need more support, more technical support, more goodness, the West said no. At the same time, we have Al-Qaeda, we have ISIS, and they were spread all over the world. And I remember very well that the Syrian Derzor, when the ISIS was coming from Mosul to Derzor, the Free Syrian Army and civil society over there, who were very close to the United States and USA programs, they told them that ISIS, before reaching Derzor, they will spend $1 million a, a week for food and services. And if you want to fight ISIS, we don't need weapons, we need food. Just give us the food for civil society, Syrian civil society, that's a week. And we can compete there without having to fight with them. Unfortunately, the answer wasn't that encouraging. I mean, they didn't answer, and we, we know that what's going on. And now we have Idlib, which is liberated, new liberated city in Syria, and we are talking the same thing to the Americans. Please, guys, go and send your food, go and send services. Otherwise, the alternative, we know that the and that time a lot of ISIS will reach, but Islam's in general, they will, they will fill the gap. But I'm trying to say that ISIS it isn't Syrian. I don't think it's, it's, I think it's too much exaggeration in the media, their power and their stronghold in Syria. I think we can defeat them. We are the Syrian, we can defeat them. Uh, they don't have safety network, they don't have social network that protect them. The people don't recognize them. Unfortunately, we don't have any, they don't have alternative. The civilians, they are living under that ugly organization. Uh, when Assad used his barrel bombs in Halab or in Idlib, so the people, in order to run away from that area of the attack, they have to go to safe area, which is either in Turkey or area under Assad where he's being executed, or they go to ISIS because they know very well that Assad will not attack ISIS area because he's benefited from them to say, I'm the alternative. So it's, some people, they think it's complex, complicated situation. I think it's very simple, it's complicated. It's very simple. It doesn't need, doesn't need too much thought of how can we defeat them, what the future of Syria with them or without them. I don't think they have any future in Syria. 100% people they hate them. Uh, they have so many foreigners, and the foreigners, they are not Syrians, so we cannot count them or fail. Uh, Assad is benefiting from them. I think he will have more, he will be more than happy to give them more lands more resources. Uh, yesterday, he had with his Charlie Rose to say, look, I, look at me, I'm the American guy with a tie, with good smoking, and I can help you to fight these ugly guys. And we always say, without Assad, we don't have ISIS. And if there's something should be done, it should be done by Assad, but to start, we should start by Assad. Otherwise, we just treating the, the, the we're not treating the cause of the problem, we're just following up with the, with the results of the problem. Two years from now, we have something worse than ISIS. We don't want. Uh, so ISIS is there. Rebel Nusra is there. Defeating them is easy. It's more political will rather than military things. Uh, uh, Kobani is what what example that the American used to say that when we 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 deal with the fighters on the ground, with our military forces, we can defeat ISIS. Uh, yeah, the Syrian. I believe that Kobani is not that good example that we are looking for. Uh, it, it's military succeed, but basically they destroy the whole cities. There's no more Kobani as a city. Uh, I think the more we build on the civil society, we, we, the more we empower civil society, the more we tell the people that you have alternative as a population, the more we are defeating all the extremists. Uh, the more we tell Assad's story and success we have, the more we're encouraging the people and give them hope. Uh, we have the, the problem of mistrust, as, as Ammar mentioned, Direction, which is a very important one. We have major problem of mistrust between the people about, and we don't. We have so many kind of projects for increase for, for new Syria that's not yet crystallized. Um, Syria anymore? It's not anymore Syrian issues. It's become international issues. In order to think about how Syria looks like, we have to think how Turkey and Iran, Qatar and so the United States, and Russia, and everybody. Did. We should consider the, the, the opinion of so many people, how they look, how they think Syria look like. Uh, but again, I believe in Syria, I believe in the Syrian, I think, and I believe uh, 
that we can change the things the way that in Syria, if we get together, the United States is playing a very major role for the goal in supporting the humanitarian uh, assistance for the Syrian refugees. If it's not enough, we should work more into building real uh, civil governors, civil society that will enable the Syrians to give them their right to choose the ID they are looking for. Um, this comes from here.